Hello and welcome to this presentation about ProSeal shipping numbers or US mark numbers. My name is Gernot Jeremin. I'm a senior application engineer at Bentley Systems. To the best way to explain what these shipping numbers are is just to, to show it and uh, you, you will get an insight and idea about what it is during this small video. Uh, here's a small um, op project. It's a carport created with ProSteel. And if I have a look at the properties of one of the objects, you will see that in the parts list data, we have the position number. So I, I created this model. I did run the standard position number process. And next to it, you, you may number that before, uh, uh, have seen that before, there is a shipping number. And uh, in, in, in older versions, there's also the phrase US mark number or US position number. So the, the whole idea is if you create your 3D model and you run positioning, that each object will get a position number, and that's what you want to do. Oh pretty much in all the time. Sometimes uh, the request came from the US, and that's the reason that it got named US mark number in the beginning, was if I take one of these objects and place it on a 2D drawing, I want to have, for instance, the name uh, of the 2D drawing that should be part of the position number. So during the placement of the 2D object, I want to write information back in here. And this is what we want to do. So first of all, what we did, we, we did run positioning and that's it. And oh, by the way, if I go here into uh, the group information data, there's a shipping number for the group as well. Oh, okay, so if I have a look at detail center, starting in at standard, I did some preparation. I have here some detail styles. Uh, I'm running here with the Australian localization, but it will work in all the other localizations as well, so that's not a problem. And I've assigned the detail styles to my objects and I have created the 2D block. So if I have a look at the preview section and say I'm going to select uh, position number one, which is uh, this column here, and if I'm going to create a preview, no, I don't need that message anymore. So this is how it will look like at the end. If I go to the settings, to the detail style, um, the, the, there is down here the information for the position number. You see position number one. And if I go to the description, I have here additional text and it says I want to have the, uh, uh, the position number with the prefix. And I also have marked shipping number, I want to get that. Uh, you don't see that down here because it has not been created yet because I didn't insert my 2D detail in a 2D drawing. But however, uh, any uh, so down here in the future, there should appear this uh, shipping number. Uh, and if I go to, to a group, let's say this one, and that's the column as well. And if I go here to the settings, there are a few things I want to I want to highlight. The first thing is in the description, uh, like before additional text, I say I want to have a shipping number. It's not in there yet because this detail has not been inserted as well. And you see here position flags, and that's now interesting. If I go to the position flag command and uh, to the settings. I have usually switched on single part because I want to know what's the position number of this single part, this single part, and this one. I have changed that to shipping single part. So this, this flag here is now looking a little bit different. So if we have a look at that, so we can save that and close the detail center, just jump back into the 3D model. And if I go to my positioning command in the layout tab, so if I go to my single part, you want to modify that, you would see I have a, a description of it. I can see what kind of information I want to have. And here it is, I want to see the position number. And I can switch on the shipping number as well. So if you have a look at it here, this it will be a little bigger because the shipping number will be included as well. But in this case, I've created a 
new flag, which is, if you go in here, you want to have an, an error and all that stuff, but I want to see only the shipping number. And the shipping number at the moment is empty because uh, now it's just, just this kind of symbol. So this is where the shipping number will be placed at the end. So that's, that's all for the preparation. I did run positioning and I have created a special position flag in the positioning command. And I, well, and this is pretty much all I have done. So now the 3D model has been created. The next thing, what I want to do, I want to insert my 2D blocks in a 2D drawing. So here's my 2D drawing. I have multiple frames. Uh, you can have multiple frames on one uh, uh, file, or you can have it just one by one. Uh, for, in this case, I want to keep it easy, uh, a little bit simple, and just have everything in one, in one sheet. So if I go to the insert tab, here's my, my car port and I have here my objects. And if I would go for uh, to the pre-sort, I can say I want to have single parts and groups of, with pre-sort, no pre-sort, oh, that's a little, but I have here my, my groups, my single parts, so it's all there. But before I insert them, so I can go in and say, yeah, this is now my column one and say insert, this is what you do. But before I do that, I go here to the, uh, special parts settings and here is a mark which says use the US mark number uh, like I explained before we have two different names for it it says the US mark number but that's in fact the shipping number and I will give you here the information where a special file is located which describes how uh, uh, the uh, uh, this mark number has to look like. We will have a look at that in a second. Just leave it like it is. And if I go in here now and say, I want to insert this one in 2D, here it is. And I'm going in here and just place it here in my, in my sheet. I will get here an additional window where it says, uh, uh, I want to have some additional information. Let's do that again. place it here oh, here we go I just make it a little bit bigger like this and I do that another time so it's just hidden in the beginning here's another one position number three and let's see if I'm uh, that's now better now it's you see it's on the cursor and that moment if I place before I place it says drawing number is one the part number is C. So it's all in drawing number one, and it's the third part I want to insert, just place it here. So here's my third one. And this is what, what I can do, just go through my objects, insert in 2D, and I can change that. For instance, I can say, oh, that should be in drawing number two, and the part number, uh, you see, will be kind of A, B, C, D would be the next one, and I can place it here in this sheet. And now uh, uh, it has a different US mark number or shipping number, and I can do that for the for the flats and the single parts. Let's say insert on this one, so it's, it still knows uh, uh, two, and the next one would be F. So I can place it here. The next one. This just takes a little bit of time. Just you want to finish that. Insert. Here we go. Insert one more. Okay. And let's say this one. And there are a couple of objects left. So before I insert those, I'm just going to close my detail center and going to close this one. Uh, I want to explain to you um, where, uh, how we can define these information I want to add or what I want to use for the shipping number. Uh, it, you, you have to remember that uh, uh, we have to change that in uh, uh, select series A8 uh, VNI for Power Pro structures. Uh, the localization folder. Everything is now in program data, Bentley, ProStructures V8i select series eight, and the workspace, 
Pro Structures, and there is a localized folder. And there are all my lo lo localizations. So if I'm going up here, you see there's a, a by default Australia, Great Britain, New Zealand, US. It's pretty much all the same. I prefer to work with the Australia localization. And in that, you find a, a format folder. And in the format, you have the, the frames. And this is what I've inserted here. And you also find this one here. And that's the ProSteel 3D mark number. And this can be opened with a, 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 a notepad. I've done that. And this is where all the magic happens during the insertion process. The first part here, you don't have to be a developer. It's just pretty straightforward. Just get have to get the idea. So this is just a, a, a header. It's just a description. Uh, doesn't say a lot. And this actually, that's the mark number template. So for single parts, um, if we have a look only at the single parts at the moment, it should be uh, uh, created out of something which is dollar part dollar and dollar sheet dollar. So that's this is how we want to define the single parts. And if we go down here, so this is now here from here, the mark number entries, we have the dollar parts dollar. And if we go down here, there is a part number. And that's a symbol. So you can you can type in here Peter Paul and Mary. It doesn't matter what you type in here, as, as long as the symbol name is up here. And actually that's the description of it. So for a single part, it's a lowercase set. So uh, if we scroll down here, we have here lowercase, and here it says character set for definitions, lowercase, and use characters is A, B, C, D, and so on. You see some of these letters like an I or O are missing. You, so you can define your own character list. And each time if you insert, it's starting with A, B, C, and so on, and is using that. If we have a look at, if you scroll up here again, uh, uh, for, for the group, we have the same stuff, character set uppercase, and down here, it's the same stuff, but it's for uppercase. So if, if we if we insert later on the the groups, and then we want to see upper uh, uh, uppercase characters. So you can do a lot of more stuff. For instance, a, a part description. Um, so that's defined by dollar desk dollar. I just say copy, and I go here to my single part, bring in any character and say there, paste description. And in the description, it says there's a symbol, which is called default, column, beam, stiffener. And uh, this is a little bit more uh, what we can do here if we compare it with uh, the positioning command that you used to know. So, and th this is what we want to see here in addition. And, and another thing is you can say you want to insert an information for the floors. So I can copy that and bring it in here as well. Floors and the floors is just um, an, an, an character input. So you, you see that you can define your mark number manually and uh, you, 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 you have the possibility to type in information, have lists, have uh, uh, part descriptions and so on. So it's really, really flexible and you, 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 can, do, you can do it however you want to. So if I if I go in here, and I think I have to restart post structures again. Uh, however, if I would go in into my carport into my last two options, say uh, um, insert this one. I use ah oh, no, I don't have to restart. That's nice. So the the part in the drawing number is switched back to one and a because I have left it. Let's say that's number three. Part number is a. Here's my description. It's the plate that came came automatic, and the level is. Uh, 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 let's say L1 for level one. And down here in the preview, you see this is how the position number will look like at the end. Okay, uh, now I can go in and say, place that down here. And the last plate is this one. And if I go in and say, I want to in insert that one in 2D, you would see here that the drawing number is three. And I can say, I want to have a new drawing and now it will switch automatically to four. So I can do that as well. So I can type in and I can use a new 
drawing as well. Sorry that that came from still from the AutoCAD, but um, let's say drawing. Uh, it's not microstation form, but however, you, you get the picture. Okay, so now I've inserted all the single parts. Okay, what about now about the groups? So if I zoom in here, okay, that's fine. Let's go over here and let's say I have my group number one. Before I insert those, I close my detail center. I save my file. And let's have a look what happened in my model. Um, if I go to the detail center and if I open it, you would see that all these objects, they should be green, right? Because I've inserted them, but I didn't change anything in the model. So, but they have turned to, to red. Why? If I close the detail center and if I go now to my column and go to the properties and if I go to the data tab you would see that the position position number which has been created in the very beginning automatically is still one but the shipping number or US mark number is now a one and this is something which has been written back to the model. So what happened, the modi flag has been activated because the object has been modified. Um, so you have, to, you have to know that because we are writing back information to the model. And uh, I could go in here and say, um, selecting my objects and I can say here, uh, 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 re re reset the modi flag and stuff like that. I can use Detail Center Express to say, uh, I want to prepare the drawing and say, uh, reset all modify flags in the model. I do that. I'm okay. Close it and then it should be green and everything is nice and shiny. Okay, so let's close that. Let's go back to our 2D drawing. Open the detail center again. Go to the insert tab. Here's my car port and here's my group number one. I'm going to insert that here in my drawing. So now it says drawing number one. Let's say that's drawing number four. You see that the part number is now in uppercase. It is a column, but I don't see that. It's just an information with it. it could be in there, but I didn't assign it to, to it. And I'm going to place my um, object here. So and now what we see here is my group. Let's do that for the next one. And the group number three. And the group number four. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go back to my 3D model. And if I open the detail center, we have here the same. And in this case, I would say update the change to D drawings. Okay, let's go back to my 2D. Oh, I should have closed that. Okay. Do that again. Sorry for that. Okay. But here's my 2D drawing and I'm going to open that. And if we have a look now at my 
2D drawing, you would see that the flags have been updated. So it says here, that's A1. You see the column uh, number one, which I've created. Here's G2, so that's the plate on drawing number two. Um, here's another plate. These are the last two one I've inserted, and you see it's a more complete plate, and it's an level one. That's the area I've created. So all of those flags uh, have been created. Uh, you, you may have seen in the beginning when I placed the group that these flags have been empty uh, because it's in from the process is just didn't know this information during the insertion process uh, so it's it's better to insert the blocks going back to the 3d model and force an update because then it will read the shipping number out of the updated 3d model and then it can write this information to the 2D drawing and everything is looking like it should look like. Okay, so thanks a lot. I hopefully this will explain how shipping number and US mark numbering is working. If you have any further questions, just uh, give us a buzz. Um, again, my name is Gernot Jaromin and I wish you a wonderful day. Thanks.